Pleural effusions are abnormal accumulations of fluid within the pleural space. They may result from a variety of pathological processes which overwhelm the pleurus' ability to reabsorb fluid. Here you can see the accumulations of fluid between the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. Etiology Exudative causes are bronchial carcinoma, secondary or metastatic malignancy, pulmonary embolism and infarction, pneumonia, tuberculosis, mesothelioma, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, and lymphoma. Transudative causes are cardiac failure, nephrotic syndrome, cirrhosis, trauma, asbestos exposure, yellow nail syndrome, and post coronary artery bypass grafting. Plain radiograph Chest radiographs are the most commonly used examination to assess for the presence of a pleural effusion. However, it should be noted that on a routine erect chest x ray, as much as 250 to 600 ml of fluid is required before it becomes evident. A lateral decubitus projection is most sensitive able to identify even a small amount of fluid. On the contrary, supine projections can mask large quantities of fluid. Chest radiograph lateral decubitus A lateral decubitus film obtained with the patient lying on their side, effusion side down with a cross table shoot through technique can visualize small amounts of fluid layering against the dependent parietal pleura. In the right-sided image, the A arrow shows fluid layering in the right pleural cavity. The B arrow shows the normal width of the lung in the cavity. Now, features in chest radiograph erect include Blunting of the costophrenic angle, blunting of the cardiophrenic angle, fluid within the horizontal or oblique fissures. Eventually, a meniscus will be seen on frontal films seen laterally and gently sloping medially. With large volume effusions, mediastinal shift occurs away from the effusion. Note that if a hydronemothorax is present, no meniscus will be visible. If coexistent collapse dominates, then mediastinal shift may occur towards the effusion. Lateral films are able to identify a smaller amount of fluid as the costophrenic angles are deepest posteriorly. In this chest x-ray, there is a large left-sided pleural effusion. There is homogeneous opacity in the left, mid and lower zone. The opacity has a concave upper margin forming a meniscus. The cardiophrenic and costophrenic angles are obliterated. There is mediastinal shift to the right. This is another case of left sided pleural effusion. The left hemithorax is much more dense than it should be, and there is virtually no aerated lung visible. The complete opacification of the left hemithorax with contralateral mediastinal shift is consistent with a large pleural effusion exerting positive mass effect. The midline is identified by looking for spinous processes. The trachea is clearly pushed to the right, away from the dense hemithorax. Loculated effusion. In the absence of pleural adhesions, effusions will flow freely 
and change location with the change in the patient's position but with plural adhesions usually from old infection or hemothorax the fluid may assume unusual appearances or occur in atypical locations such effusions are said to be loculated loculated effusions can be suspected when an effusion has an unusual shape or location in the thorax for example the effusion defies gravity by remaining at the non-dependent part of the thorax when the patient is upright on a conventional radiograph. This is an x-ray of loculated effusion where there is obliteration of left costophrenic angle with a wide plural based dome shaped opacity projecting into the lung, tracking along the costophrenic angle and lateral chest wall. An important differential diagnosis is empyema. Subpalmonic effusion. In this condition, the location of the effusion is beneath the lung, between the parietal pleura lining the superior surface of the diaphragm and the visceral pleura under the lower lobe. It can be difficult to detect on conventional radiographs except for contour alterations in what appears to be the hemidiaphragm, but this is actually the fluid lung interface beneath the lung. So, though the apparent right hemidiaphragm appears to be elevated, this edge does not represent the actual right hemidiaphragm which has been rendered invisible by the pleural fluid. The peak of the pseudo diaphragm will lie lateral to the normal position. Now, whiteness in lung is it effusion or not? Look closely at the texture of the whiteness. Consolidation usually causes more heterogeneous shadowing, typically with the presence of an air bronchogram. Look carefully for an air bronchogram, since its presence will point to consolidation rather than a pleural effusion. Look at the shape of the upper border of the shadowing. Fluid will have a meniscus, so the upper outer border of an effusion will be concave. To differentiate an effusion from a raised hemidiaphragm, look again at the shape of the upper border. The upper border of an effusion will peak much more laterally than you would expect the diaphragm to do. Look for mediastinal shift. Collapse usually causes mediastinal shift towards the white lung field, while a large effusion causes mediastinal shift away from it. Thanks for watching this video. You may like to watch other videos in this playlist. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done yet.